Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the Photos app on the iPad. So most of the apps on the iPad have an equivalent on the Mac. For instance, Mail goes to Mail, Calendar goes to iCal, iPod goes to iTunes. But Photos on your iPad is a little different. It's a very stripped down photo viewer, not at all like iPhoto. Let's take a look. So I want to show you the Photos app on the iPad. And here you've got several different albums comes up. Let's start here with the photos. This is just one long list of all the photos that you've been able to sync from your computer and also that have been saved individually to the iPad. So we can go to the albums view to basically uh, go and sort them by album. So these are the albums that I've set up in iPhoto with the exception of this one which is the saved photos. These are photos that were somehow created in some way on the iPad. Now the iPad doesn't have a camera but what it does have is the ability to take screenshots like these. Uh, some apps will actually create various uh, uh, different graphics that you can draw or from uh, some other things. So any app that can create a photo or any way that you can take a screenshot will be put into the saved photos album and this will sync back to your computer when you sync your iPad. And you could jump to one of these albums here and you can then jump to a photo. You could view it. You can scroll through the photos at the bottom like that. You can start a slideshow. You can also, for this individual photo, email it, uh, sign it to a contact, use it as a wallpaper, or copy it. And copying it, you can paste it, say, into pages, or you can page, paste it into an email. So we go back to the album here. And one of the cool things you've probably seen is the ability to do this and put it back in the album. And we can tap on another one to go to it. Now we have also events, faces, and places. So events. That's the way that iPhoto sorts things by default. Basically, uh, is you know every time you take a bunch of pictures and then sync them to your Mac, you get an event created. Also, faces, which is something you create in iPhoto, and places. That's something that you might see in iPhoto, but this will work on your iPad even with pictures taken on Windows uh, if they're geotagged, and your iPad will put them together. So you could jump to say a a pin and actually view what's in there uh, as an album just based on be it being in the same place. Now when you're looking at any grouping of photos, you can press this button here and instead of getting a choice right away of what to do with these, you can then select them and you can select three here and in this case I can email all three or copy all three to the clipboard and then paste them in something else. Now if I do this with the saved photos, I can actually have one more option and that is to delete them. So looking at a photo here, we could zoom in on it and then pan around zoom back out. Uh, when we tap in the middle we get these controls here again. We can also of course slide it, the entire thing over to see each photo like that. Now one of the things you can do here is you can make this your wallpaper. Now there's actually two different types of wallpapers on the iPad. The first is the lock screen and that's what you see at the beginning and it says slide to unlock. And then there's also the home screen and that's actually what's behind all the icons that you can see. So you can set one or the other or both to a particular image. Emailing a photo is also very easy. Tap there and it'll create a new email message without ever leaving the photos app. You type two in the subject and you can type a message. You can see it's pasted in there. Now my test shows that it's not the original image that you're emailing. Uh, this is a pretty large uh, five megapixel image here, uh, possibly even more. but uh, emailed, it comes out to be about two or three megapixels, which is still pretty good. I'm not sure if the conversion happens when it's com uh, coming to your iPad because you really don't need a super high resolution version for this screen or any VGA output you have from it, or whether the conversion is happening when you're sending the email. But if you're looking for a way to give somebody a photo and you want them to have the best quality copy of it, this probably isn't the way to do it. So first, the good. The photos look fantastic on the iPad. The screen's wonderful and you can flip through photos really nicely. It's just a pleasure to look at photos on the iPad. But the bad is that photos could be so much more than just a photo viewer. I mean, at least give us the ability to maybe tag photos, do different things to them, do some simple editing and adjustments, things that might sync back to iPhoto or just allow you to send a modified version of the image uh, via email or post it somewhere, say, to Facebook or even MobileMe. 
One thing I don't show is the picture frame functionality of your iPad. It's not part of the Photos app. It's just something you set up in settings and it will create a slideshow that shows on the lock screen so you can use your iPad as a digital picture frame when you're not using it for something else. This does relieve a lot of room for third party developers. Like I'd love to see an app where you can pick a bunch of photos and narrate them and send them to somebody as a video. We're also still waiting for the camera kit for the iPad. This will include two different things to connect to your dock. One is something that allows you to connect an SD card so you can load photos directly from your camera into your iPad. And the other is something that will connect directly to your camera via USB. Be interesting to see if these add features to photos or maybe there's some sort of new app that uses them. It'd be great to see if we can actually use the digital camera and take a picture and have it appear directly on the iPad. Hope you like this quick look at the Photos app on the iPad. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.